Danny Chris here, 2019's Instructor of the Year here at Prime, and I'm reaching out to let you know I've created 10 quick episodes to help you become a professional driver, or if you've already got your CDL, to help you with some of the day-to-day -day operations. Now, these videos cover a wide variety of content, not just CDL prep, but also things that are going to help you in that OTR phase of your drive. Now, I'm really excited to be releasing these videos as kind of a compendium to my current students, my previous students, but also hopefully future students as well to give them the resources they need to get the most out of their drive, the most out of that CDL, and to better their best. So hopefully this is going to be meaningful content that's going to help to accelerate your knowledge base and get you out on the road to success sooner. You know, do yourself a huge favor, make the call to Prime, find your path. Do you want to change your life? Do you want be your best, tired of having all that strife, now's the time to reinvest, pick up the phone and make a call, it's your time to give your odds, change your life, you know you can, sing it out loud, C-E-L, yeah my man, C-E-L, alright dude, C-E-L, now's the time, C-E-L, yeah go call crime, C-E-L, oh yeah, C-E-L, make the move, C-E-L, no time to wait, get on up and let's move, so great. Okay, one quick thing about Prime's referral program before we get started. Now, Prime is such an amazing company at rewarding hard work. It's truly incredible the way that Mr. Lowe and the whole team share the success of this company from the top to the bottom in every phase. And one way that they do that is through the referral program. Every incoming driver is given an amazing opportunity to share in the potential wealth of their new career with a current driver for Prime at no personal cost to themselves. All they have to do is tell their recruiter the name and the driver code of a current driver for Prime. Now, if you already know a driver for Prime, please make 100% certain that you get their name and their driver code in. It is vital to the business model here to reward excellence and share in the success. In that regard, if you don't have a current friend or relative that's driving for Prime, for every new applicant that uses my code, I will personally donate $100 to Springfield's local food banks. They say that $1 equals four meals, so you'd be contributing 400 meals to Springfield's local families. That's pretty incredible. Remember, we're all in this together. Make sure to message me directly that you've used my code. That way I can track it and get that donation in. You can connect with me at any time on the information here on this YouTube page or through my Instagram. Now, let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Let's talk about the pre-trip section of your CDL exam. Now, for a lot of folks, this is an intimidating part of that CDL examination, but when we break it down into its core elements, we realize it's not that scary after all. So let's break it down into those core elements. Now, in Missouri on test day, you're gonna have a possible four different pre-trips. You're either gonna have an engine compartment, a driver's side door and fuel area, a trailer, or a full. Now, all of these are gonna come with these mandatory sections, coupling, lights, and in-cab with an air brake test. When we talk about that engine compartment, what we're talking about is this axle right here. When we're talking about that driver's side door and fuel area, it's gonna be these axles back here, and that trailer section is gonna be the axles all the way in the back. That fourth possibility is gonna be a full, which is all three of those axles and all three of your mandatories. So, when we break it down into those core elements, we realize it's not that intimidating after all, we just gotta build it brick by brick. So let's talk a little bit about the techniques that we're gonna use to build this thing. Now, two techniques that I like to use are something called sequencing and something called grouping. Now, sequencing, if I asked you to give me the alphabet, you wouldn't say Q, L, F, J, R, W because you wouldn't know what you had said and what you hadn't said. You'd say A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That way you know when you got to G, you've already said A, B, C, D, E, F. So sequence matters. The order in which we say things is how we're gonna be able to create a geography to know what we've already done and what's yet to come. So sequencing is a great suggestion for retaining information and knowing where you are. The other technique that I like to use is something called grouping. Now your phone number is 10 digits, but to you it's not. To you it's three, it's three, and it's four. It's easier for our brain if we break things down into different groups and then compile them back together. So that's the technique that I like to use with retaining information. I'm gonna make available my one sheet which breaks down different sequences that people can use and I will make that readily available. Go ahead and hit me up with my email address uh, or through Instagram and I can get that to you. So let's talk a little bit more now about those mandatories. 
every CDL pre-trip examination has some mandatory. So let's talk a little bit about those. Now, you're always gonna have a coupling section. That's where that tractor and that trailer come together. You're always gonna have a lights inspection. That's where we walk the entire vehicle and assess the lights, making sure they're functioning correctly. And you're always gonna have an in cab with an air brake test. And we know just how vital that is. We'll talk more about that here in a second. Beyond that, we're always gonna have an axle and every single axle has suspension, brakes, and wheels. So when we break that down a little bit further, we realize we can just kind of plug this information into these different sections and be pretty close to 100% right. Let's go out into the field and take a little closer look at what that axle looks like. So, as we know, no matter what on test day, we're gonna have one or all three of our axles. And what do those axles all have in common? Our suspension, our brakes, and our wheels. So let's talk about those five basic components of your suspension. You're gonna have your spring mount, your spring arm, your U-bolts, your shock absorbers, and your airbags. On your brakes, you're gonna have your brake hoses, your brake chamber, your slack adjuster push rod, your brake drum, and your brake lining. And those four components of your wheel on every wheel is gonna be that tire, that rim, that hub seal, and those lug nuts. So when we break it down and see that they're just a combination of these different sections, we realize it's not so difficult. The air brake test is gonna be on every single test, no matter what. So let's take a look at that. There's gonna be three different sections to that. First is the applied pressure test. Next is gonna be that warning light and buzzer test. And finally, the protection valve pop-out test. Again, the air brake test is vital. It's the only section of the pre-trip that is auto fail. So know your in cab, it'll make or break you. Great, let's go out into the field and take a look at what that looks like. Absolutely, thank you Bree for that great introduction. The air brake test is the only place we can auto fail, so we need to give it extra attention. That first test is gonna be the applied pressure test. We're gonna be fully depressing that service brake, waiting for our gauges to stabilize. And when they do, we're gonna make sure we do not lose more than four PSI in 60 seconds while listening for air leaks. Now that second test is gonna be called the warning light and buzzer test. And what we're doing here is we're gonna pump down on our brake until the warning light and the buzzer come on, which should occur at or before 60 PSI. Now that third test is gonna be the tractor and trailer protection valve pop-out test. And what we're doing here is we're gonna to continue to pump that brake until both our tractor and our trailer valves deploy, which is gonna occur between 20 and 40 PSI. So now we have a good understanding of that air brake test. Again, it's comprised of three different sections. That first is gonna be our applied pressure test. Second is gonna be that warning light and buzzer test. And third is gonna be that tractor and trailer protection valve pop out test. So let's head back to the classroom and hear a little bit more about what the next episode entails. So a lot to unpack in this episode. Let's dive right in. First, that air brake test. Now, we know the air brake test is comprised of three different sections, and it is the only place that we can auto fail that pre-trip. So we need to give it extra attention. Please refer to the Instagram page for a full video of a passing air brake test as you continue your studies. Beyond the air brake test, we know in Missouri, we're gonna see four mandatory sections, the coupling, the lights, the in cab, and at least one axle. Now, again, we know that every axle has suspension, brakes, and wheels. So pay extra attention to those specific groups. For a complete breakdown of my sequences and grouping for those sections, as well as the entire pre-trip, please message me directly for an electronic copy of my syllabus, and remember to watch those IGTV videos. Beyond that, remember to use that referral code in your application to Prime. Let's help feed Springfield together. We are really excited to continue to bring you helpful and meaningful content about your CDL test and your OTR drive. The next episode is gonna cover your general backing maneuvers for that CDL test, as well as two practical backing resets that are gonna help you in between those maneuvers. Really excited and looking forward to it, and I think there's one person in particular that might offer some insights into this. Let's head out to the field and check in with him. Right on, man, right on. 
that. <laughs>